Welcome to Chaos Cortex. Hey guys, so if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I have a 3D printer. The 3D printer that I have is the Robo 3D, and I've had it for just about a year now. And I would have done like an unboxing sort of video um, if I had been making videos at the time, and then given my first impressions and stuff like that. But since it's been a year and I've had plenty of time to use it, um, I thought I'd just give a little review of it. Before I get started, I should mention that I do not have any other 3D printers, and I've never used any other 3D printers. So I can't really compare this to other 3D printers. I can only give my view based on how I've used it for, from the perspective of someone who's never 3D printed before. Okay, so first of all, I'll talk a little bit about obtaining this. Like, how do you actually get it? Um, and as you can guess, you just order it online from their website is what... Actually, I think... I can't remember if I ordered it through their website or Amazon. Um, it was the same price on both. But anyway, um, the shipping said it would take about a month to get here, but it ended up getting here in like a week or a week and a half or something like that. So that was amazing. And it was packaged really well. It was a big box, obviously, to encapsulate this. Packed in there really well, and there was plenty of foam inserts to keep things in place. So nothing was broken, and I actually had it out of the box and printing within 10 minutes. Um, it was that easy because they included a little thumb drive that had some video files on it that kind of teach you how, I think the videos are also on YouTube, um, how to get going and then they give you their software. Um, I just went to Thingiverse and found a little companion cube, downloaded it, set it up, pushed it over to the printer, and I think within a half an hour I had my first print. So from opening the box to finishing my first print, it was only half an hour. and. That's pretty extraordinary because from what I hear, a lot of people say that these things are, um, the 3D printers in general, are they have a steep learning curve. And, you know, for someone who's never done anything like that to only take 10 minutes to get in and start it is pretty remarkable. And I think that's one of the advertising points of the Robo 3D is that it's easy. It's very user friendly and... You know, they try to take care of a lot of things to um, just get you printing. Like, they want they want to remove the, the setup from the process as much as possible. So they definitely get points for um, shipping and handling because it got here way earlier than I expected and it was in great shape. Nothing was broken. I haven't had any problems. Um, and then another thing I should mention is their customer support. Um, I've talked to them on a few occasions and probably the best customer support I have ever experienced with a company. They are extremely friendly. I think they're 24 seven and um, you know, they, they have a, on their website, they have something that uh, you can just type in your question. It goes to them and then they said they'll get back to you within 24 hours or something like that. But I had a response within 20 minutes, I think. And the, the person was extremely friendly and very willing to help. Um, and because I think my question was around NinjaFlex and how to get that to print. And if you know what NinjaFlex is, it's extremely flexible filament. And this printer is not designed to print with that. Um, but they gave me a file that I could print a new housing for this that should help. And then they said I need some tubing and stuff like that. And it's not even their brand of tubing. It's just tubing that you can buy. And they offered to send me a piece. And... I think they're somewhere in Europe, so that's pretty incredible. Um, extremely friendly, A plus on that. Okay, so let's actually get in and look at this printer. Okay guys, let's take a look at some of the features here. So, first thing, this print bed is heated, and that is an extremely big deal when it comes to 3D printing. Um, it'll help your prints adhere better, and you don't have to mess with any tape or anything like that to get it um, get the prints to stick and not warp. So you can actually come out with a completed print and not have a bunch of failed ones. So that's amazing. And also the, the build area is very large for this. Um, I can't remember exactly what it is. Um, it's something like 8 inches by 7 by 10. Something like that. I will put the actual dimensions down in the description. So check there. Um, I'll also put a link to this printer and to some of the filament I use. 
Okay, and then the next thing you might notice is that the bed is sticking out a little bit. And that's because the y-axis on this is actually from the bed. So the bed will move in and out, while the head here moves left and right and up and down. It doesn't actually move in and out. The bed does that. We've got our stepper motors over here that actually control the x-axis. And then down in the bottom, you can't see them, but you can see where they protrude right there, actually controls the z-axis and this little metal rod that keeps it in line. And then this is actually the head, the stepper motor that controls the, um, the gearing to make the filament come out. So you can see that right there. And then the filament actually feeds in right there, that white thing you see, there's the filament. Feeds in, goes down there, and the gear has a hobbed bolt that actually pushes it through down there. And that's how it controls it. And then this is where the filament mounts. This little piece right here, they send with the printer. And it just slides on right here, so very easy to do. Um, a lot of people don't like the way that's mounted, and they actually just print some things that go in the top slit here. And then the, the filament will actually sit up here and feed straight down. I just haven't done that yet. I had wanted to test that out, but just haven't gotten around to it. And so as you can see, the filament is there, feeds up through here, and then comes down through the top to the head. And now a lot of people make adjustments to their printer, and make quite a few of them actually. And I actually have not done very many adjustments. Actually, the only adjustment I have done is this thing right here. It is a controller for it, so it doesn't need to be plugged into the computer. Um, and the only reason I did that is because if my computer went to sleep and it shut off the USB power, the printer would stop and then you'd have a failed print and that's no good. So I got this controller, I think it was like 70 bucks and I'd recommend it for anyone who has this printer. And it's just a little graphical display that lets you you know, preheat the bed, move the axes, and then you can just load your files onto an SD card, pop it right on the side here, and then print from that. And then th this enclosure is actually just printed as well. And the files for that are free. And actually the Robo3D did come with a SD card um, slot in there. And I never used it. I don't know how well it worked, but there was no control for it. So I don't know if you just plugged it in and it printed what was on there. Um, I, I really don't know. But this screen is not necessary um, if you don't want it. Uh, you can just plug it into the computer and it'll work just fine. Um, another great thing that comes with it are these tools and these will be your best friends because it's a little pair of tweezers there. Extremely helpful. And then this is actually used to help um, pry things off of the bed. Extremely useful. Now push this back so we can see the logo there. Pretty nice looking printer all the all the way around. Oh, and there's one more huge feature that makes this printer stand out. It has an auto leveling feature. So you don't have to mess with leveling the bed. Every time a print starts, it'll go around each, uh, I think nine different spots on the bed and check the leveling. So you don't have to mess with that and it'll just have it and print automatically, which is extremely nice. Okay, so those were all the features that I really like about this. Now on to what I do not like. Um, there isn't much here. One of the things that is a little less convenient is um, it's not enclosed. And that's not a huge deal most of the time. But it can be a problem for temperature because sometimes the prints get a little too cold while they're on there. The heat doesn't stay in and if they cool down too quick, they can start um, warping and peeling off the bed. And um, I combat that with just turning up my um, the the bed temperature, but because my house is typically a little bit colder than most people's houses, so just keep in mind that your environment can affect it. And um, I've seen a few other printers that have the the print area completely enclosed, and it seems like that'd be nice. 
but that's a pretty minor complaint. Then another complaint I have is how the filament is inserted in there. If you can see this, there's just a little thing here, and you can do this. Okay, I don't know if you can see this, but I'll move it over a little bit. This is how the filament is inserted. Okay, so this is how the filament is actually inserted. You can see in there, there's just a tiny little hole at the bottom. And then these springs enclose that to keep it pressed against the hot bolt so this can turn and extrude it. And while it works really well, it is hard to get the filament in there correctly. Most of the time, I end up having to unscrew these screws right here that are spring-loaded, so you have to be careful when you unscrew them because they'll fly off. But I have to unscrew those, pull this back, and actually insert the filament. Um, in that tiny little hole down there and then close it back up and it's just kind of a pain um, and If your filament's not really sturdy like towards the end you can see that this gets really really curly and It has a high potential to break off So again a pretty minor complaint and something that you know some people might not even notice so I'm just being nitpicky there, but But it is something to be aware of so aside from a few very minor complaints um, I would hands down recommend this to anyone looking to buy. Um, and one of the biggest pluses of this is the price point. Because, um, you know, other printers that seem comparable to this one can sell for thousands of dollars. You know, like 3000 and up. But this one is um, under $1,000. I think I when I bought it, it was like $800, and I think that's still pretty much where it's at. Um, and for something like this... Um, you won't find anything else that has this kind of quality, a heated bed, and this um, this size of bed, or this size of print area for this price. And so that was amazing because, you know, for someone that's just doing this as a hobby and can't really, you know, devote, or they don't know that they'll be able to devote a lot of time and energy into this, you know, it's a lot easier to scrounge up $800 versus $3,000. Um, for something that you don't really know if will be of utility to you. So anyone who's interested in 3D printing, this is a great 3D printer. Like I said, I had no experience and I was able to grasp it right away. And I've been using it for a year with absolutely zero problems. So definite, definite recommendation for me. Well, that was my review of the Robo 3D. So thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video. It helps me out a lot. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at Chaos Core Tech. And once you've done all that, check out some of these other videos I've made. Thanks for watching, guys.